Let's learn about Bertrand, Cournot, Stackelberg, and collusion based monopoly and how they differ when it comes to setting the price and setting the quantity. So when we have an oligopolistic competition, there could be various ways in which firms compete. If there are two major suppliers and many buyers, they could decide to compete on setting the price. They could decide in Kuno model, compete on setting the quantity. They could either decide, hey, we are moving simultaneously, or no, we have a player with the first mover's advantage, and they are setting the quantity, which is Stackelberg, and they could all out collude. They could decide together that we will act in complete harmony with coordinated actions, and that we have one quantity that we would supply to the world, and we would divide the profits based on a joint single price. So that's monopoly. So each of these possibilities lead to different outcomes when it comes to price and quantity. We will see at the very end, once we derive each of these um, equations from this demand function that we have, price equals 30 units minus quantity, given this demand function, and given that it takes us two units at the margin for our costs, and if you assume both of these firms are identical, meaning they produce same homogeneous goods, there's no one good that's much better than the other good of this other company, and that there's only two firms. Under these three assumptions, we will see that the monopoly configuration, which is this one, perfect collusion, will have the highest price, lowest quantity. Kurno will have slightly lower price, slightly higher quantity. Stackelberg for the first mover who actually has the advantage, we will see how they have slightly lower price and higher quantity compared to Kuno. Similarly, Bernat, Bertrand, sorry, we will see that it has even lower price and much higher quantity. So we start to see that depending on price quantities, your revenues will change. Based on your revenue and based on your marginal cost, your profits will change. So understanding what competitive situation you're in will really be helpful to find out what should be your price quantity combination. So let's start with the first one, Bertrand. Here, the firms are deciding simultaneously on a price. They give you a price input and they're ready to sell any quantity at that clearing price. So that's the key. Ready to sell any quantity at that price that they have set. And there is no incentive for the firm to set the price above the marginal cost. Because if they do that, if firm one puts the price above the marginal cost that they have, then firm two will undercut firm one with a lower price and firm one will lose the market. So it is safe to assume that the price that they will use will be equal to their marginal cost. So that's a bird ramp. Simultaneously setting prices. And they'll set price based on their marginal cost. And they're both thinking through what the other company or the other firm is doing. And they have their marginal cost, as I said, the identical firms, similar marginal cost, similar demand function that they're facing. So marginal cost is two. Price and quantity demand curve is given to us, P equals 30 minus Q. They would set price equals marginal cost so that no one is going to undercut each other. So if we equate price equals marginal cost, 30 minus Q equals 2, we get the total quantity between both of these firms to be 28. That's our QT. And so then if we de decide that, hey, we're going to split each of these in half, we get each of these firms producing 14 units. So now we see Q1 producing 14 units, Q2, 14 units, firm 2, total 28 units are produced. Price would be 30 minus Q, T, QT is 28, so price is 2, same as marginal cost. Oops, the revenue, price times quantity, 28, and 28, same for the other firm. Total revenue, 56 units, yeah? So that's what we get. 
with birth and competition. Given price, given price, you can easily calculate what quantity. From the quantity, you can calculate the revenue. From revenue, eventually even you can calculate profits. Yeah? So so that's birth plan. What's happening in Kurno? Kurno, what they are doing is they are competing and deciding on quantity first. They're deciding what's the quantity output that we will produce, and the price will be derived based on clearance. Like, hey, if I produce this much quantity, supply and demand. Wherever the demand for my quantity produced is clearing, that's what I'll have the clearing price. So if Kurno will depend on the market supply and demand dynamics to arrive at a price. So they put in quantity, they get out price. So let's derive this. So P equals 30 minus Q is given. Marginal cost for both of the firms is 2. So what's the revenue for firm 1? So remember, both of these firms are acting simultaneously. Again, this is also simultaneous. Yeah, Same simultaneous here as well, like, like bird fan. So firm 1 is thinking, hey, let me try to find out what is my revenue curve. So revenue for firm 1 would be price times quantity. So what is quantity Q1? Uh, is, is for the firm 1. And what is price? 30 minus Q. So 30 minus Q times Q1. Q or QT, we know is Q1 plus Q2. Yeah, it's a total quantity. So we can substitute Q by Q1 plus Q2. So we get this, this equation. So the revenue for firm 1 would be 30 minus Q1 minus Q1 squared minus Q2 Q1. What's the marginal revenue? We... Look at the change in revenue or change in quantity Q1. So differentiate this equation by Q1. So 30 Q1 would be 30. Q1 squared would be 2 Q1. Q2 Q1 would be Q2. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So if we equate this to marginal cost, which is 2, we get a relationship between Q1 and Q2 from firm 1's perspective. Imagine firm 1, firm 1 was doing all of this thought process and then they got Q1, they got how much quantity to produce, yeah, which is 14 minus 2 Q1, 14 minus half Q2, yeah, so that's their, based on what they think firm 2 will produce as quantity, they will have their quantity that they can easily set for themselves, so firm 1 knows they will set Q1 quantity when they have firm 2's quantity, yeah. Similarly, Q2, firm 2 will do the same thing and arrive at something similar. Q2 would have the quantity equation that says my quantity would be 14 minus half Q1. So Q1 and Q2, both firms are doing this independent analysis. And now we are given two equations with two variables. So we can easily solve for Q1. Yeah. So because demand equals supply, yeah, at this at this point, we would have we can easily get from these two equations, how much would be Q1 and Q2? So in this case, we see Q1 and Q2 is equal to 9.3, so somewhere around 9 units. So we start to see that in Bertrand, when they were setting price, the quantity that they arrived at was 14. Here, they are trying to find out what will be the quantity that the other firm would produce, and they have no benefit of producing anything outside of the equilibrium. So the equilibrium happens at demand equals supply and MR equals MC at that point. And we know at that point they're getting Q1 and Q2 is equal to 9 units, which is much, much lesser than Bertrand. So then total quantity is 18 versus 28 in Bertrand. Price would be much higher. Look at that. 30 minus 18, which is 12. So now they're able to charge much higher price. So look at their revenue, 108 for each. Total revenue is 216. 56 almost four times increase in revenue even though quantity reduced almost by 50 percent price went up big time almost six times compared to Bertrand so look very quickly we can see that Kurno model helps them achieve much higher revenues now imagine they're not acting in sequence but there are two players but not identical because one firm has much higher power than they can actually 
uh, decide to be the first mover. When they decide to be the first mover, they can set a quantity much, not in tandem, like in this case, both had this equation, Q1 and Q2. Firm 1 can just do this and find out, hey, what will firm 2 do? And they'll know Q2's output would be equal to 14 minus half Q1, which is what they've derived. So firm 1 would know that this is what firm 2 would do. And so based on that, it will check its revenue. And its revenue will be P times Q1. And it knows you can, from this, you can uh, substitute uh, Q2 here. So P is 30 minus Q, so Q is Q1 plus Q2. So if you substitute Q2 here, you will get this whole revenue in, in terms of Q1. So once we get revenue for form 1 in terms of Q1, if we differentiate this with respect to Q, we get quantity of 16. Meaning this firm should set quantity of 16. Yeah? So when this firm sets the quantity of 16, we know Q1 is 16, so Q2 would, can be easily found from here. So Q2, the form 2's response would, for form 1 setting it to 16, would be 6. So firm 2 would only set 6 units because it knows that if firm 1 has been a first most advantage, that it's best for me to only set it at 6 because that's the optimum. So then, look at that, quantity is further increased, 22, yeah? Price is slightly lower compared to this one. And profits thus would be slightly lower than pure cool novel, they're both acting simultaneously. But remember, R1 as a percentage of RT is much higher here compared to here. So this firm, although total revenues is lower, R1 is much higher than R1 here. So this firm was able to take advantage of this other firm significantly, even though there's a reduction in total revenue. So that's Stackenberg. Firm 1 continues to get better and better from Bertrand, it got better here, from 28 units to 108 units to 128 units. So that's Bertrand, Fudo, Stackenberg. But if they were like both like complete monopoly, meaning, hey, these people collude, talk to each other about and set one price and set one quantity. Then what would happen is there's no, no such thing as Q equals Q1 plus Q2, it's just Q. So it's price times quantity. And then if we differentiate that and get marginal revenue, we get uh, MR equals MC. So MC is two, so MR is 30 minus two Q. So then we get quantity is 14, yeah? Total quantity is 14. So that means they both, let's say, decide they want to split in half, seven and seven. But imagine you had a collusion slash monopoly and there's one firm which has much higher power than the other firm. And they could even decide, hey, we're going to do 10 and four. I'm going to take 10, you take four, but even though you'll be much better off. So let's here decide that they do 50-50 split. If they do a 50-50 split, we start to see that uh, total quantity reduced big time, right? 28 to 14, almost half. Price, much higher, 16, right? It was $2 in Bertrand. $16 here, total revenue $224. So what do we see here, folks? We start to see quantity trend, where total quantity is going down, yeah? Firm one is getting stronger and stronger, yeah? And total revenue, we start to see going up. So that's how we can, we can actually uh, now arrive at Monopoly, Puno, Sackleberg, Bertrand, we start to see if this was a demand curve, margin revenue, how we start to see this impact in change. So that's uh, oligopoly with Bertrand, Kuno, Sackleberg, and uh, complete collusion slash monopoly. Wait.